Roller Skate Revivers. I'm Mickey, and for today's project, we are going to take an R3, which is a basic, uh, like a common introductory speed or derby skate, and we are going to put them with these Vaus. They are not vans, they are Vaus generic sneakers and also an aluminum plate to make an introductory park skate. You ground the skates and I'll ground the tools. Let's go rolling around. You may be wondering why I uh, describe these, this as an introductory park skate project. And part of it I need to acknowledge my bias, which is that I skate on artistic boots um, because they're really firm. And I think more people should. I think they're a really good way to get a, like a really strong uh, park skate if you can't afford something like Bond Park Stars or something like that. I think they're comparable but like significantly cheaper. Um, but so sometimes when I see people on vans, I'm like, oh my god, that's so, how can you skate in something like there's nothing on your ankle, your ankle's naked. But I mean, I don't skate in these, so I could be wrong, it's just my my opinion bias. And so the, the plate that I'm using is the Powerdyne Thrust, which is the same one that comes on the Moxie Lolly. So it's like, not the, you know, it's not the best, but it's not the worst either. I know lots of people park skate in Moxie Lollies, but it, I mean, this one does break sometimes, like not immediately. I know lots of people who have had these and never broken them. I also know one person who had one and broke it, but to be fair, she was skating on it for like three years. So, I mean, it's, I think for most people, it's good safe bet, but it would be totally fine for like learning to, you know, to carve and to drop in and maybe like some basic stalls and things like that. So it's probably fine for like the average person's first year or two. But if somebody were wanting to, you know, use this for like, I don't know, for running some huge airs and things like that, I would say that that's, I would try to talk them into getting something stronger. This is me from the future, I've already finished. And so now I'm gonna tell you what tools I use so that you will know before you start. So the tools that I used in stages um, for removing the old boots, I used the regular skate tool to take the trucks off. And then you need, I needed a screwdriver and either a small wrench or the bolt uh, back nut spanner. Uh, need, you don't need both of these, one is fine. I just prefer this one. And then, unfortunately, I did need to use my Dremel to cut one of the uh, bolts because it was all rusty and I couldn't get it out. You won't necessarily need that every time, but I did, in fact, need it for this one. And so for the mounting, uh, first I used the duct tape to attach the aluminum insoles to the outside. And then I used the masking tape to cover the uh, insoles so that I could mark where I wanted to drill, I used the marker and I used the ruler to decide where I wanted to place them. And then for the actual drilling of the holes, I used the very basic drill I have with two sides of bits, one to start and then one to widen it. And then afterwards I used the countersink so that you won't feel the hardware when you're skating. And then there is of course the hardware. I used M5 by 30. I wish I had M5 by 25 as well, though that would have been ideal. Uh, the washers I already put in there so you can't see them, imagine they're here. And then some more, some nuts, um, lock nuts with uh, nylon inside is what I like to use. You could also use the toothy lock nuts and some, what's it called, Loctite, but I just use these. And then when I was attaching it, uh, I find this to be really helpful because you can, that way it helps you get inside the shoe because they don't actually have a lace to toe design like boot like skate boots do but then i used a regular screwdriver for the back heel ones and then either one of these you don't need both um either a little wrench or the back nut spanner i really like the back nut spanner and that's everything you need so now i'm going to take the plate off of this r3 and first i'm just going to use a regular skate tool to take the wheels off and in case you didn't already know uh, you can use regular skateboard tools for roller skates. The only thing, the only difference is that they have a couple of things that we don't typically use. And also uh, they won't have a, uh, like a wrench for the toe stop. But other than that, like for the, the wheels and the trucks, it's the same thing. So anyway, I'm gonna take the, the wheels off and then I'm going to use a screwdriver and a, uh, what's it called, back nut spanner and, or a wrench. If you don't have a, you can just use a wrench also, but I'll explain why I like this better. Um, and please use a, head that is the right as close like fits the mounting hardware as well as possible because if you're using the wrong size and you're like 
Messing with the lock, then you might actually strip the screw, and if you do that, it's really hard to remove. I actually have a pair of boots that, as far as I'm concerned, they're trash because I can't get the bolt out, the screw out of it. I mean, I only paid 15 euros for them, so it's not a big crisis. It's more of like a lesson <laughs> to never do that on expensive boots, but uh, please don't do that because it's really hard to fix if you do that. So make sure that you get a size, like an attachment that fits inside that really snugly so you're not like moving it around a whole lot. So let's get started with this. Or if you want to save time, you can also just use a drill to take the wheels off. Well, I said I was going to use the hand tool, but I, I think I'm going to try to use the drill to make it faster. Uh, let's see if that works. Sometimes you can't use a drill because the mounting hardware will be too long and so it can't actually get in there. But if you can use a drill, it will of course be a lot faster. Take the truck off to access it. So let's see if I can use this drill. And so I'm using the screwdriver to hold the... Oh, it's, maybe I don't need it. Maybe it is. Fixed. Oh, that was way faster. That's great. Sometimes the screw will stay in place and you won't need to use a screwdriver. Sometimes it'll spin with the uh, tool and you will. So that's great. I didn't, that was way faster than it could have been. I just put my finger in to see if so I'll know if it's spinning or not. actually really easy to remove. Sometimes with uh, eBay finds, it's a mixed bag. You don't know if it's going to be some weird mounting hardware that's really hard to remove or like such bad condition that it's hard. But this one was actually pretty easy. So if I just get the screw stuck, get off. There you go. So that was actually pretty easy. Uh -huh. So this one is spinning. Yeah, so I'm going to have to use the screwdriver for that one. So I'm going to put the screwdriver inside to hold this in place. And then I'm going to try to screw it out. I'm worried that I am starting to strip it a little bit, so I'm going to do the rest of this one by hand. I'm going to hold it in place with what I was talking about, the back nut spanner. And then I'm going to unscrew it from the top. Well, so I'm finding that this last, all of them were really easy, except for this last one. It really doesn't want to come out, and I'm starting to do exactly what I said not to do, which is the inside. I don't know if you can see, but it's starting to get a little stripped. So I'm going to actually bring out the Dremel, because I fortunately I was able to unscrew it enough that there's a space here. So I'm going to have to bring out the Dremel and cut this off. So what I have here, it's not actually a Dremel, it's some off-brand, but it's basically the same thing. It's like a tiny little drill that people use for like engraving and hobbies. And usually I use the cutting wheel if I uh, have mounting bolts that are too long and I need to cut them down so that the wheels of the skates aren't hitting them. But you can also use it for problematic mounts like this one. So that's actually why the goggles are pretty important when you're using one of these cutting wheels because they are just probably going to go through a couple of them and they're just going to explode. Coming off. Yeah. All right. That was enough. Good. I don't like to cut more than I need to. I was worried it's going to break off into my face. Cool. All right. So I have liberated both of the plates off of the boots. 
And you might be sitting at home thinking, why didn't you just buy them? That seems like a lot of work. And sometimes it is. I mean, when you buy something used, you know, it's like you never really know what you're getting yourself into. Sometimes it's really easy and sometimes it's like really rusty or whatever and it's kind of hard. Uh, that was not too bad. It was mostly easy with just one slightly problematic one. So next we are going to mount the plates onto the boots or shoes rather. And I put the wheels back on just so I can use them as a guide to figure out where I want to uh, mount, like where the hole should be. Uh, because normally what I do is I line up the front axle with um, the widest part of the shoe or the ball of the foot and either put it either there or a little bit ahead. Uh, not behind, but maybe a little bit up. Either right under or a little bit ahead. ahead. Uh, so this is a little bit of a pro tip, which is that there's two problems with mounting shoe skates. One of them is that if you put the insole inside of the shoe, then it's going to get pushed up with the drill and then the hole's not going to be in the right place. And the other thing is that this, this waffle sole is actually really hard to put your drill where you want it to be. It's not like a, a regular roller skate shoe where it's totally flat and easy to drill where you want. So you can solve both of these problems by attaching the insole to the bottom of the shoe and then marking where you want to, want to drill and then drilling there and then after that putting the insole inside the shoe. Um, one time I attached the insole with super glue and that actually ended up making it really hard to remove so I don't do that anymore. Um, now I use duct tape. And we are going to want to put this as much as possible where it's going to be on the inside of the shoe. So let's try to match that. It's going to be kind of back here. There we go. Now let's do that with the other one. Here we go. And I actually like to put masking tape over um, the insoles or even the sole of the shoe if I'm just using a regular skate and uh, not doing the insole on the outside so that if I change my mind about where I want to put the mounting holes I can just rip the tape off and not get confused being like wait was this the first one or was this the second one I made? Some plates have a left and a right especially if they have uh, what's it called like a Allen wrench that you use for the toe stops, but the power down thrust does not. It doesn't matter which one you use. So you can even just use the same plate to decide the placement on both of them. Uh, they do have the center line already marked. Um, and FYI, I know mounting is that you don't actually put the center line in the center of the toe. You kind of like measure out the center of the biggest part of the foot, the ball of the foot, and then the heel is always pretty easy. You can use the center, and then you draw a line. From there and it should be a little bit of scant, like maybe between the second and the third toe it shouldn't actually be in the center of your foot because that's not where your balance is going to be so actually i think i might go grab the roller so what i'm doing right now is measuring the ball of the foot i think i'm going to need a little bit more tape so i can mark that and then i'm going to find the widest part the ball of the foot widest part of the widest i mean the widest part of the boot, and then mark the center of that, and then I'm going to trace that center line. I mark the center of the widest part, and then draw a line, center of the heel to that, and it actually looks like this. And do the same thing on this one. Here's the center line, and as you see, it actually is what if you look at it with your eye you're going to think it's a little bit askance uh, but that's how it's supposed to be so now let's go back to deciding where it should be so i'm looking at it and if sorry i'm gonna to have to look at where the ball of foot is so if you want the ball of foot it's going to be right about here then that's right about where i want the front wheels to be so I'm going to end up mounting it right about like this. So now I'm going to mark and line it up with the center line that I already drew. And then I'm going to mark those spots with the marker. And as usual, uh, measure twice, drill once. So it's worth it to spend some extra time 
like moving it around and looking at it several times, making sure it's straight so that you don't mess it up. I've marked uh, where I want to drill in each of these spots. And actually, I am really glad that I used the duct tape because initially these holes ended up way too big when I was like, you know, with the marker. So I just put the duct, I said duct tape, but I meant masking tape. So I put the masking tape a second layer and um, just marked more precisely where I actually want to drill so I won't confuse myself later. And I'm just going to, I mean, my drill is really shitty. <laughs> I don't have a nice drill, but um, it's good enough for this purpose. Put something on my back so I don't make a huge mess. Okay. Now that I have drilled holes in the sole, the next step is going to be to take it off and to use a countersink like this to drill a little bit on the inside of the insole so that the, um, so that the mounting hardware will lay flush and you won't feel it on your feet. Um, so just make sure you remember to flip it over because you know, this is, if, if I were to drill the countersink directly in that right now, it would be on the wrong side. So I need to take this off and then drill this side. I decided to leave the tape on the outside just to make sure that I remember which is the right drilling side. So with the countersink, I want to show you how much you need to counter, the point of the countersink. As you can see, this one is kind of drilled in. This one I haven't done yet. This one's drilled in. And the point is that you want to be able to put the hardware in flat so that you're not feeling it under your foot. Because otherwise, if you don't do that, it's going to be like this and you're going to feel it. So now I'm going to do that one, two, three, four, like eight, seven more times. So I have finished drilling the holes in the insole and the shoes. And I have finished also countersinking so that the hardware will be flush and won't be stabbing you in the foot. So now it is time to put them in the shoe and mount. Um, I already put one of them inside just so I wouldn't get confused over which is which. So we're gonna put this one in. And then I am using M5 by 30. I hope that's gonna be long enough because otherwise I'll have to use, the next size I have up is 40. Um, and the reason why I like to use short bolts uh, and like specific is because as you saw earlier, when I was uh, had to remove the plate, I had to cut into it with a Dremel, and that's not actually that fun. <laughs> I don't really like doing that. So um, ideally, these will be just barely long enough to uh, attach the hardware, and they won't have to cut anything down. So far, it's been pretty easy to push them in and then have them find the hole. Sometimes it's harder with the, the ones in the front because you can't actually access them directly. These ones are super easy, as you just saw. Yeah, there you go. All right. As you saw, that was harder, like I said it would be. But uh, yeah, now they're all through. So, with, like I said before, with the power line for us, it doesn't matter which one's left and right. It, you can do whatever. So I took the trucks off so it would be easier... Let me take this off too. So that it would be easier to access and to mount. Hopefully I put everything in the right place and this will be easy. Um, so I'm going to reuse the washers. I'm going to reuse because those are fine, it doesn't matter. But I am going to use brand new um, wash nuts. And make sure that if you are that you're locking nuts, you need to either use a lock washer or use Loctite or use nylon locking nuts. If you use um, just the standard nuts that might come in a bag that you get from the hardware store, then they're gonna fall off. You have to do, you don't have to do all three of those things I just mentioned, but you have to do at least one, maybe two. Um, to me, I usually use the nylon. I use nylon locking washers and that I think is good enough. But when I first started DIYing skates a million years ago, I forgot to wash it in. I uh, didn't use, I just used the regular nuts that came at the hardware store and my the nuts fell off my friend's skate. So that's why I don't do that anymore. <laughs> so first I'm just hand tightening this 
so that the hardware will stay on and then I'm going to use the tools. So this is where I have a specific recommendation. I forgot what this is called, maybe a right angle uh, screwdriver, something like that. And it's really helpful if you're going to be mounting shoe skates because otherwise when you're trying to use a regular screwdriver, you can't actually get all the way in there so you won't be able to hold the screw in place. But with this one, it's still challenging as you'll see probably in a couple of minutes, but it's you can put it in and then kind of hold it in place with one of your hands um, and it's a lot easier than using a regular screwdriver. And this is where I like to use my friend butt nut spanner. Oh, something in there. Oh, shit, my... No, I love you! Don't be don't have something stuck in you. I forgot to remove the nut that I removed earlier. So I think, that, as you can see, I'm just tightening it with my hand, which is way easier to twist than this. If I were using a wrench, then I would have to always be like, ah, like replacing. So, I mean, if, you, if all you have is a wrench, that's fine. But I think that this is actually way easier to use. And then I'm just going to do each part a little bit. I'm not going to like do one all the way. I'm going to kind of work my way around. So now I'm going to go around again, and this time do each one all the way. So now we have one of them mounted. So I'm going to put the original insole back, just obviously because the aluminum is not that comfortable. And I think you don't need to see me do this twice, so I'm going to turn the camera off. I'll show you when I'm done with the other one. Finished! If you're observant, you might notice that this one doesn't have the mount the uh, toe stop hardware. That's because I'm actually making another video on how to clean rusty hardware so they are soaking in vinegar right now. Spoiler, that's the answer. Soak it in vinegar. Uh, so it's not finished, finished, but for the purposes of this video, it's finished. Um, and actually, I was worried that the, what do I have? I have M5 by 30. I was worried those would be too short, but they're fine. But these are a little bit long in the front, so actually I wish I had some M5s by 25. And I think it's alright, but I would be a little bit happier if they were a little bit shorter. Um, but other than that, turned out pretty well. You ground the skates and I'll ground the tools. Let's go rolling around like a couple of fools. Don't care if we're old, let's start something new. Let's be go rolling around me and you. Oh, oh, oh.